Greetings, fellow investigators, and welcome back to our video podcast, Into the Darkness, where my friends and I play the Call of Cthulhu role-playing game. I'm your host, Tom Rayleigh. The campaign is entitled At Your Door. It was written by Ellen Eisenwill, Mark Morrison, Barbara Manawi, Chris Adams, Scott D. Annie Olowski, and Herbert Height. I'm your Game Master, and this is Episode 33. Our recap will be done by Brian Daly as his character, Dr. Jonathan Liege. So without any further delay, let's continue our journey into the darkness. Brian? This is Dr. Liege. I've appropriated Dr. Mill's tape recorder for the purposes of doing a quick log for the day so far, and to record a little bit of what I'm doing in the makeshift car lab. Uh, hopefully, she doesn't mind me recording over one of her earlier attempts at songwriting, and that we can later discuss why she feels the need to start every cadence with O oh Magnus, and why she feels that iambic pentameter is optional for a sonnet. I've been using the vehicle's laughable air conditioning system to get things to a stable point, though I've noticed an uncomfortable number of unmarked containers, and I don't have a marker. Okay, the, uh, the jar with the blue plastic lid is, well, I'm certain it's, uh, I'm certain that's bleach, and the, plastic water bottle I'm pretty sure has denatured isopropanol. Um, I'll have to label this later. Uh, I met an interesting character today. One of uh, sort of a doomsday prepper that might be useful later in procuring uh, reactive compounds of a less bootleg nature. Wait, what is this? I didn't make this. Oh, um, while I was making this goon's acquaintance, my cohorts contacted a black market dealer and discovered that some of the children in our delightful tent city have started playing a game, which uh, disturbed Jade quite substantially. Um, the jury is still out, but I'm hopeful that these children running around telling people that they're going to die are being odious rather than ominous. We have also picked up a stray, one of Jade's college acquaintances, a geologist, a fact that all of my, well, that all of the earthquake stranded biologists have found very useful. Uh, almost immediately after making his acquaintance, uh, we were informed of a sinkhole-like phenomenon just outside the camp, uh, spurting air and sand and such. And uh, I will discuss the notion with my colleagues prior, but the I'm of the opinion that an overnight stakeout of the pit is in order. I hope that the night site provided by my newly made friend and my MRE surprise are enough to show things go sideways. Um, that's not supposed to be bubbling. Crap, 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 crap. Um, okay, that's, uh, that's more stable. I don't think my rudimentary safety gear is enough to contend with the shoddy conditions of my lab, but with the way things are going, I doubt I'll survive long enough for the lung cancer to get me. And seriously, Heather, the tape I recorded over, um, your, your sweet nothings could use some work. All right. So, uh, you were uh, standing there getting ready to go back to your tent when you were accosted by a preacher uh, who was yelling out stuff uh, at the crowd, he sees you and says, Brothers and sisters, he says, the end is nigh. Uh, look around you at the, the signs and portents. Give up your material worth. This is a sign from, from above that the end is near. What do you guys, what do you guys do? Uh, how are people reacting? Are they kind of like uh, just ignoring him, or does he have some people that are actually listening? Oh, mostly ignoring him. 
Uh, you get the impression he's been there for a while. I'll stop for a minute to hear what he says. Okay. Well, he says, he says, listen to me. Now that you're listening, I'm so glad. He says, uh, it's time that you looked uh, to your future, look to a future without the need for materiality, to live off the lands, to be uh, young and pure. Look at you. You're so young. You, you have your whole life ahead of you. Don't waste your time with this this nonsense around you. Fly and be free. Does he have any signage or is he waving a book? Is he dressed in, I guess he's dressed in rags like everybody. Yeah, he has a Bible. He has like what old, looks like a, a old beat up Bible. Yeah. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. Uh, where did your revelation come from, my good sir? Oh, my revelation. When I was, it's, it's a very personal thing to me. A number of years ago, my, my dear daughter, she passed away. And I couldn't understand why God had taken her from me. I, I didn't know then that all these things must fall into place. They are all there for a reason. But it wasn't until I met him that I could see the light. The signs, don't you see them everywhere around us? The signs are in the sky, in the ground, in the water. The signs are in the dust and the, and the, and the, 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 the things that we surround ourselves with. We fill our lives with all kinds of nonsense. Don't you know? Don't you see these signs? They're telling us, they're telling us that the time has come, that the thief is on his way, that the enemy is at your door, that he is going to take everything from you. I'm sorry, who was it that, that you saw, that you met? Oh, my friend, my dear, the most innocent of children, the most beautiful of of splendors. Tell us more. I am intrigued. It was only after this disaster had occurred. I stood on these street corners and I preached the word of the Lord. But afterwards, in my sorrow and my horror at this horrible disaster, that I met him. Who who do you mean by him? Uh, you, you seem to talk as if you physically met him, not as in as the concept I understand. Oh, I'm not talking God. about. I'm not talking about a vision from God. I'm not talking about an angel, though you could call him that. My friends, there's no way to describe how I feel on the inside, but uh, you you should meet him yourself. His name is Alex. Alex. And I'm going to walk closer to him and like have my head down and be like, but if he is truly this powerful, I'm not worthy to meet him. Oh, it's not power, my friend. Uh, stop those sort of vain sort of thoughts. He just sees clearly. He tells us things and we know that they are true. Well, I need Alex. My friends need Alex. Please. What does he tell you? The truth. He tells us the truth. The truth about what? The truth about all of it. About everything. About how we need to overcome ourselves. And where, where can we find him? Well, he's everywhere. He's here. He's there. You can find him. Just keep looking for him. Maybe he'll find you. How would we recognize him if we saw him? I'd hate to uh, meet this Alex and then pass by on accident. Well, he'll look like a 10-year-old boy, but not like any boy you have ever met before in your life. You'll know him. Hmm. I want to start getting closer to him because I know I have the um, mm -hmm. that necklace that's supposed to... Uh, counteract Alex, yeah so i want right. to start i just kind of want to get closer to him all right how close do you want to get 
So you want to go stab right in front of him? Yep. All right. Nothing changes. Yep. That's okay. He continues. He says, uh, he says, there are, there are evil forces in the world that are trying to, to deceive us all. And it is the deception that we need to overcome to get away from. Did, if you did, want to find Alex, find him. He is there. Did Alex tell you what the name of the anime was? Materiality, my friend. Materiality. Does is he... It, is Alex... Oh, sorry. Oh, no, please. I was going to ask, is Alex familiar with the works of uh, Robert Jadick? I'm not familiar with the works of Robert Jadick. I don't know what he knows. I only know what he tells me. How how close is he to the pit? Uh, is he able to see it from where he's standing? I don't know where he is at the moment. Oh, I was asking the keeper. Sorry. Oh, uh, oh, the, oh who? Oh, uh, the preacher. The, the, he's close yeah. to the pit. Mm-hmm. Well, the yeah, you guys were at the pit. It's maybe fifty feet from where you're standing. Okay. Are you here all times, good sir? When I'm not asleep, when I'm not eating, yes. Mm. Are you here at night? Sometimes. Oh, have you seen, does the enemy come out of that pit? You speak as if we're talking about something abstract, my friend. The, the, the enemy is the way we have all been deceived. Oh. The enemy is within us. It's within us. It's not an external thing. There is no devil. There is no monster. There is our hearts that need to change. I see. Uh, and what should we call you, my good man? Why, well, everybody here calls me oh, Salter Bob. Salter Bob. Uh, well, it's a pleasure to meet you. Where is Alex's church? Alex doesn't have a church. Alex is amongst his people, his friends. Does Alex have a lot of friends? Oh, yes. And growing every day. Is, well, there an, yeah. is there an outward symbol for his friends? Like if I find him and become his friend, no, how would no. I recognize another? No, Alex is all about the truth. He doesn't need symbols. He doesn't need metaphors or similes. No, he will tell you the way it is, the way it is, mm. without any kind of nonsense or Bullshit. That looks like forks. You're speaking of the Brotherhood of Forks. Yes, are they associated with Alex? Why, yes, they are. He founded them. Are you a member of this Brotherhood? Yes, I am. Is that why, uh, is that what it means to become awake, is to recognize Alex and his uh, wisdom? Ha, huh. to become awake is to realize that what Alex is telling us is the truth. That, that, that the things that we are attracted to are deceptions. And uh, you should go and meet him for yourself. Where can we find him? Seek him out. You'll find him. I guarantee it. I will. I will, get Salty. Salty Bob. <laughs> Salta Bob. <laughs> Salta Bob. Oh, okay. I was like, that's a weird name. <laughs> or what exactly is his name? It's not Salty Bob. Salter. 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 As in, oh. as in somebody who re- re- preaches the Psalms. From the I Bible. thought it was Salty Bob too. Salty Bob. <laughs> Salter Bob. <laughs> a lot of people salt- make that mistake. Salter Bob. <laughs> I hope to uh, see you again in be uh, enlightened when I when I when we meet again now interestingly when you guys started to pay attention to him a few other people started to pay attention like is he really saying something interesting and some of them listen for a minute and some of them walk away and it's about what you'd expect Mm -hmm. and if that's it then he's going to go back to preaching which includes bible stuff yes sir Walter Bob you said that um when you're not sleeping or reading, you're preaching the word. That's my mission. Um, is there 
other than the Brotherhood of Forks, is there a name for Alex's true religion? Alex has no religion. Alex's uh, wisdom, is there a name for your organization or his teaching? None whatsoever. The truth. The truth. It's the truth. And when you are eating, are you eating the dreadful stuff in the tents, or is Alex providing you with loaves and fishes? No, my friend, I can see where you're going with this thought. It's not Jesus, although Jesus may have been somebody very much like Alex. There are no miracles. There are no, there is no magic. Does Alex eat of the food of the tents as well? Of course. He is one of us. But it's brought to him. He doesn't go into those places. I would guess with his throng. I have no idea. Is he here in the tent city? I'm sorry. I'm sorry, my dear. Is, what did is, you say? is he is he here in the in the tent city? Oh yes, yeah, somewhere. Seek him out. You'll find him. I'm sure you will. Or he'll find you. I believe. We'll be seeing you, Soldier, Soldier Bob. God bless you. And you. And yes, God bless all of us. And he goes back to preaching as you guys walk back to your yeah. tent. Walk off. I was like, um, I asked, the, what was the guy's name? J- Jade, Jason. what's your friend's name? Jason. Jason. Jason, has he been there before? Oh, yeah. If you don't listen to him, he'll follow you around. Really? Oh, sounds awful. <laughs> he feels really to dedicated to his to his work. Well, you know, that's all anybody can ask for, really. Jason, at some point during the next couple of days, if stuff starts to get really weird, just run to an MP or a military place and just stay with them. I can't get into it any further. Don't ask. I won't tell. But if shit goes sideways, just go find a guard post and stay there. I've never bullshitted you before. Through college, we were friends. Listen to my advice on this and just. Okay. All right. Trust me. I don't know what you're talking about, but yeah, I'll look, do it. Look, look, it's, it's, it's okay. Look, Jade's just been under a lot of stress. You know, this whole thing's been hard on us all. She's just been a little worked up. Don't worry about it, kid. It's Speaking okay. of which, I got some booze from our good friend uh, <clears throat> Rita. If anybody would like a finger or two after that. Uh, I mean, our good I'm, friend or your good friend, Rita? That's my <laughs> Margaret. Um, Who's I good think friend? she's going to be I was just going to say about, about this time you see John, Dr. Liege uh, coming back from the car. Yeah, everything's fine at the lab. Yeah, and everything's fine with the Brotherhood of Forks. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, turns out that they are, in fact, the followers of Alex. Okay. Yeah, we learned Wonderful. that because uh, there's some uh, doomsday preacher that just told us. Oh, that guy? Yeah. I just walked behind him. Or, uh, well, he followed me for a couple of times. It was a little creepy. Well, more annoying than creepy. but So he knows what's up? Well, he seems to be entrenched in what's up. Yeah, I wouldn't say he knows what's up so much as he is a true believer. He is and... part of what's up. Okay, so he's smitten. Yeah. Is that a good term? So, yeah, uh, and Margaret feeling. Margaret got up next to him with our uh, anti-Alex talisman, and it didn't make the weird light go out of his eyes. So it's only protection for those pre-deranged. Where is Jade's friend so... at? during all this discussion? Well, he he goes back to his tent. Okay, so he's left. Oh, I thought he's, he'd moved in with us. Yeah, he'd moved in Oh, with he us. had moved in with you. Yeah. He, he's, he's gone, gone ahead for his cut. cut. Yeah, we'll say that he's walked ahead with Jade. Okay. So mm-hmm. there, he's not hearing what you guys are talking about. Okay, that's what I was like. Yeah. 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 Good point. Like, we don't know that he's be... not a true believer as well. Okay, I have right. to worry about... Um, what Jade tells yeah. him. So 
We have to worry about everything. Also, we need to we need to stay close. What's yeah, the we range do on that thing? Sixty. Sixty. Sixty feet. feet. Okay. okay, that's it. And uh, Dr. Leash, your lab's not going to blow up our car, and it must be real hot. No, I I made sure to use the air conditioning to get everything stable. At least temperature stable. If anyone rams our car, which given that it's, eh, we're, we're fine. It's fine. Yeah, boxed in. So we're going to want to pick some stuff up from there before we visit the uh, sink, sinkhole later? Is that the idea? Uh, maybe. I don't know if uh, uh, I might have some stuff ready by then. Um, so we're going to head out in the morning? Is that the plan? Because I was, uh, I was uh, thinking stakeout would be good. I was with you, Dr. Leeds. That could be good. Yeah. Look, well, whatever we some... do, we all have to do it together. Right. right. Yeah. Right. Can't leave the, the, the safety. Yeah. yeah, we could get there, set up a rotating stock. I could work on some of my songs when I'm on my watch and stuff. So. Your 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 songs. You've taken yeah, a music we need to, together. We need to talk about that. Where... Any, later, later. The nice thing about having Jason around is that he will be in the tent while we are not, so we won't be looted. Very true. We're not going to invite him along on our sinkhole stakeout gain. That's what I was going to ask. We're going to stake out the area around the sinkhole at night. Uh, I th yeah, we're kind of leaning toward that. Okay. All right. So, so tell me, tell me your plan. How exactly are you going to do this? You're going to go and. There's going to be tents. There's going to be people asleep. Um, uh, what, what Jason said was that he found the footprints in the morning, right? Mm -hmm. And that's why he thinks it's interesting to go in the morning. But if we want to see who's going at night by making those footprints, then we need to be there overnight. Yeah. But if we if we uh, stack out as early as possible in this loud, stinky, hot shithole, and we wake up at midnight and and uh, ditch the kid, and you know, I mean, it's but it's tarmac in some places and sand in others, or is it mm -hmm. gravel? The sand, gravel, yeah, dirt, yeah. But we can, you know, I mean, anybody who can fall asleep is going to care about us walking quietly out to this fence. Yeah. So we have we have official documentation, which gives us some amount of legitimacy. Uh, we might want to talk with some of the some of the MPs, um, see what they know, and if we can actually get there okay. But it's it's get within the, the up. isn't it in the tent? The curfews for outside of the tent area, right? Correct, mostly. So yeah. you still have the you chain still, link, right? You still have documentation. Yeah, it's still, yeah, and it's still fenced off. Yeah. It's still fenced off and we still have um a geologist saying that there's footprints showing up. Yeah. I think we just take some lawn chairs, go out there and sit. I mean, people are gonna be sitting outside and we're not gonna be like the only people sitting outside and just watch. I, I I agree with everything. I don't think we should tell the MPs ahead of time in case any of them have been corrupted by Alex already. But if they do come up to us, we show the credentials and we say we're doing the geological survey. We're all doc. Well, you guys are all doctors. I'm a grad student. We have the clearance, so they should just look at it and be like, "All right, just keep it down." Hopefully. Yeah. I'd rather beg for forgiveness and ask for permission. Very true. All right. So you said lawn chairs. Um, you're going to go there and set up lawn chairs near the perimeter of the sinkhole? I think we should be a little away because if yeah. we're seen, the activity might not happen. You will be seen. There is no way that you won't be seen. Yeah. So there, I there wanted, are people everywhere. I, I want to go ahead. Oh, 
I was thinking about Putney kind of where that preacher was at because he said he could see it. You know, that's a little little ways back. Uh, I, and, I wouldn't want to go where that preacher's going to be at because sometimes he apparently shows up at night. Well, yeah, that's, that's well he's not going to. He's you can guess that he's not going to preach at midnight. Well, people here's are going to be asleep. Don't throw rocks at him. <laughs> that's her. I have a thought. Is there a tent that has visual range? of this sinkhole there are dozens of them and they're well, filled with people we have cigarettes we have liquor and we have cash bribing somebody to stay inside their tent for a couple hours for a bottle of whiskey or 50 no, I, I wouldn't want to get anything like that i mean we can well, seriously just get chairs bundle up and watch i mean yeah, there's people it's everywhere pretty, if we're looking from inside the tent they're not seeing us if we just hanging out outside Who's they? Whoever's going to be going in or out of the pit. Or well, no, what do you mean out of the pit? People don't leave the pit. Quick, I, uh, what time is it right now? Um, in the evening. What time do you want it to be? It's okay. I did. I I guess I was unclear on that generally. So it's evening. We can. We have a little time to figure it out before dusk. It's still super hot. It's very right? hot. I assume a lot of people are on cots outside of the tents. Probably. Because it's yeah, not they're... as hot. Right. Yeah, the tents yeah. can be stuffy. Yeah. How's, how's the moonlight? Um, it's fairly strong. It's a bright night. So, you know, if we, we know where Jason's gone through the tent, uh, through the fence, to check this out. The right. gaps in the fence are near the sinkhole. So if we put up, you know, very casually some cots and chairs spaced out along that fence. I don't think it's going to look any different than anybody else who's sleeping Correct. outside. Right? Also, I'm sure there's also going to be people, there will be people awake. There'll be a group yeah. of people laughing and drinking over there. And... There'll be people playing cards and people who've been to Rita's getting drunk. And, you know, all we've got to do is not make a show of it, which is why I don't want to bribe anybody. Now, the other thing, though, is attention. That... Is that you've been up all day? So are you gonna? Are you intending on staying up all night? Uh, no, we we we're gonna be be together because we have to stay within range for our little handy dandy. All right, shield. So if we power we nap sleep. until midnight. Yeah. Staggered staggered shifts. Yep. Right, okay. and make sure we shifts. get something from the from the mess hall too. Okay. So we'll say that you get food. You take a power nap. And you all get up maybe at 11.45. Yeah. Uh, you're all in the same tent. Um, uh, Jason is sound asleep. Um, Jade, as you recall, he's a pretty sound sleeper. Okay. Still be quiet. Right. And once again, there are, you can hear noise here and there, but mm -hmm. you can hear a lot of snoring from people. Yeah. There's kids crying, yeah, there's deep it's, laughing. It's as there's, if you're in a gigantic refugee camp full of people uh, in the middle yeah. of a disaster. Right. And <laughs> I mean, yeah, I'm the not. only one is milling about. There mean? aren't any radios or anything playing because, you know, if there were, people would start screaming at them. Shut that fucking thing off. So, mm -hmm. all right. So it's relatively easy to get your whatever gear. What gear do you want to take as some lawn chairs? Um, anything other than lawn chairs, and you don't, you're not going to need blankets. It's freaking hot. Yeah. Uh, what do we have in terms of light? Flashlights. Did, did we got some flashlights from the. And car there are still. there are you know lights from latrines and stuff like that on. There's camp lights on. I'm worried about the other side of the fence where the pit is, and there's nothing. And inside there. the pit. Yeah, it's dark. Right. Just moonlight there. on the moonlight, and that's on sand, right? The, the sinkhole is on sand. Yeah. So it's fairly, it's going to be fairly stark, easy to see a hole. All right. Yeah, I'll have the, I'll have the little night sight pocketed. Mm -hmm. and I'll have my handy dandy MRE backpack. Yeah, I'll bring my mace. All right. Do I have? I still did. I got a whole pack of palm cigarettes, didn't I? You did. So I'll bring those on flame. <laughs> Who knows? Well, Desmond, looks like you missed your date with Rita Raincoat. Oh, damn. 
Damn, damn. Well, she seems like a forgiving type. All right. So you guys decide to, to sit there. Uh, you find your spot. You can clearly see where the pit is. You can see all the tents on this side. You can see the river over there. Um, and for, you know, a few minutes as you're sitting there, you, you actually feel a little relaxed. It's almost like camping. It's like sitting outside under the stars. It's hot. But at least you're sitting and you're comfortable. Um, and I guess I'm going to ask the question again. Are you all going to stay up all night? Or are you going to take shifts? Or what are you going to do? I think we should take shifts. So. All right. So what, are, what, what order? How are you going to go on your shifts? Mm. I'll take the first one. Uh, where's the Where's the moon at? We'll say at this point it's you know about uh, eighty degrees. It's okay. Uh, it's maybe a, it's gibbous. And let's make it and a rising. Moon. And rising. And rising. Yeah. Okay. So I'll I'll take a shift where the moon is going to be lower and it's going to be darker. So I've got the night sight thing. And right. I'd like a, a late one too, because I got fucked up this afternoon. So getting a little more sleep before being on call would be good. Yeah, you can have the morning. You can have the early morning one or the just, late morning one. Just wake me whenever you need it. Okay, so first shift is going to be Heather. Heather. Heather and Margaret. The dynamic duo. That's right. Nothing bad ever happens when we split up on our own. No. <laughs> Never once. And Jade, Jonathan, and Desmond are asleep. All right. I would like you to all do power rolls. Uh, I failed. I failed. 39 is a pass. I failed with a 95. Ouch. <laughs> I just got an extreme. Just. You got an yeah. extreme. Yeah. I just got a regular pass. And, and I'm sorry, every uh, other roll is going to be terrible. <laughs> Heather, what did you get? I failed. You failed. And Margaret, you passed. All right. So you guys are sitting there. Uh, three of you were asleep. Two of you were awake. Um, right about two o'clock in the morning, um, Margaret and Heather, you were trying to have um, a rudimentary sort of conversation just to sort of keep yourself from falling asleep. It's getting kind of boggy. You know, you're kind of running out of things to say. Um, Heather suddenly stops responding to you, Margaret. You're, you're saying something to her and she's not answering you. And you look over at her and her eyes are wide open. Um, and do a spot hidden for me. Thirty nine is pass. All right. As you're sitting there and you notice this, you suddenly look over at the tents and you see a couple of people walking out of their tents uh, with no expression on their face and they're just walking towards the chain link fence. And as soon as you notice that, you notice there's a couple of other people down there that are walking on the road towards the chain link fence. And suddenly Heather stands up. And so, and so does Desmond and Jade. Their eyes are wide open. And they start slowly walking towards the chain link fence. Um, I'm going to be like, Jonathan, wake up. As I try to get, what? I'm going to try to physically just block Heather. Does she like, if I start shaking her, what does she do? Um, she tries to go around you. 
Do you have pepper oh, spray? Oh, you, you physically shake her? Yeah. Um, Heather, do a power roll. <laughs> what's going no. on? What's wrong with no. her? Fail. Look, what's, look at all these what's wrong with Devin and Jade? They're all going to the pit. Hey, do you have pepper spray or something? we got to get them shocked out. Hey. Uh, I'm going to smack Desmond in the face. Desmond, do a power roll. Eleven. All right, you pass. Um, you suddenly blink your eyes, and you you seem to wake up. Ow, Jesus, Jonathan! You're welcome, Jade. I'm gonna uh, just grab Heather by the hair and just Jade's Jade's the yank her hair. Yeah. Uh, Heather uh, doesn't seem to be responding. She wants to go. She's not fighting you, but she's not stopping. All right. Well, I want to just kind of try to get her pinned onto the ground. Okay. That makes sense as Jonathan is She doesn't me. she doesn't do much resisting of you pinning her on the ground, but Jade, wake up. He wants to get back up and, and go. Meanwhile you're seeing other people walking towards that chain on the fence. Um Jade, what do you uh what do you guys do to Jade? Same treatment. Okay, you're gonna slap her? Mm-hmm. All right. Do a power roll. Desmond, try and grab some of those guys. 38 out of 50, just a pass. All right, so she starts to blink her eyes, and you wake her up, but Heather's not waking up. All right, well, I'm going to take out, I'm like thinking, I'm going to take out a cigarette, and I'm going to just waft it under her nose. <laughs> not how much um, she loves these things. Come on. <laughs> that might work. <laughs> uh no response. She just, she's blank faced and she wants to go. Now, Desmond and Jade, you remember a dream. And the dream, it was almost as if you were in another life somewhere else. There was glowing, beautiful, bright orange color everywhere. Um, it was peaceful and it was warm and you were swimming in an ocean of boiling hot magma and it was the most wonderful feeling that you've ever felt. And that was very strange. You had both the same very strange dream. It was like an ocean um. of Lava or magma. So I'm smacking more people. As soon as I okay. see Jade kind of some light come back, I'm okay. running off and smacking more people. Just okay. that. Um there are about twenty or thirty people now. Uh you you can you know, well, you know, go ahead and do some power rolls and you'll get one for every, you know, you'll wake them up. But they're climbing over the fence, most of them. Um, Did they seem to be coming as family units? No, not necessarily. They're just random people. But there are children in there. So I'm going to focus on the children, except at first we've got to get Heather. Uh, Margaret, I'm going to... I got, I got Heather. Just go. Oh, you got her with the smoke? No, no I, I have her pinned. Just go. Oh, pinned. All right. I'm going to well, try and squeeze a bottle of water in Heather's face. No, I got Heather. Go. I, Go save the others, Jade. They're 20, 30? Yeah. I'll, yeah. I'll just try and say, smack up any of the kids, any of the adults. Around. Okay. Well, have every each of you do a couple of power rolls and tell me what you get. Well, you tell me. If you fail, then you end up struggling with this person because they're, they're trying to get past you. Um, and... You, you can't focus on more than one person at a time then. Okay. I'm, I'm just running. I'm just success. doing drive-bys. Okay. Just doing drive-bys. And I, I have... Of us. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, and my success rate is 6 out of 13. Okay. So... so this 6-year-old kid is kicking my ass. So. You're, waking up, you're waking a few of them up, but some of them have climbed over. Some of them are fully dressed. Some of them aren't. Um, some of them are barefoot, some have shoes on, 
Uh, you assume they sleep with their clothes on because you don't want them to get stolen. But they, they're they all going over the fence and they're fi- they're going to that rope and they're climbing down the rope into this pit that's about, what did I say, 60 feet across. And uh, Are any of you going to, well, I'm not going to say anything. You guys are, are busy fighting these people off. I want to see what's in the pit, but I also don't want Heather to just... Right, and she will. Something crazy. You know that if you if you get off of her for a minute, she's just going to get up and go. As is anybody just so happy to be close? I'm. Um, any of the other investigators? I mean, I'm kind, kind of, of running around trying to grab people. Yeah. All right. Out of five power rolls, I made th- three and lost two. Okay. So uh, you're, well, how do the people who wake up act? They don't know where they they I are. Was, and I was looking for the young uns more than the old uns. Yeah, they don't know where they are or why they're there. And they think sleepwalking, but they're surprised there's other people around too. Yeah. They have Did no you, idea what's going on. Should I back to your tent? I failed the first four power rolls and I succeeded on the fifth. So Okay. So you've had difficulty struggling with some of these people. They're not waking up. And uh, um, I'm, I'm just going to, in desperation, kind of just shout, even though it's night, it's going to piss people off. And just be like, Desmond, see where the hell they're going down there. Now, it would seem that this is it. Maybe, maybe 30 people total. And of those, you've turned back... 20 and 10 of them have succeeded in going over the fence and uh desmond are you going to run up to the the fence and look down i'm going to run toward margaret because i want to help with heather okay i mean i I don't think heather because we were all near the fence so i think i'll be able to see their descent okay um so is there another way definitely see them no no other wave okay Okay, so they're, they've got Heather. I'm going to go to the fence and see what I can do to help. All right. Uh, when you look over the fence, you can see that at the bottom of the pit, uh, towards one side, one at the far end, a hole has opened up in the ground, and the people are jumping in. They're just disappearing out of sight as they jump into this hole. And it's, it's I can like, yell, but that's probably not going to do it. You can also see that there's dust and, uh, you know, little bits of, as if this hole had opened up and they're jumping into it. Okay. Okay. It'll all be over in a few minutes. And not even a few minutes, you know. 20, 40, uh, 40 seconds and they'll, they'll all have jumped in. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm not going to jump in after them. That's... Well, you'd have to climb down into the pit. Mm-hmm. So what are I'm you doing? Going. You can see it happening. There's not much you can do to stop it. Uh, you can all do sanity rolls. I'm a, we'll I'm see if you at least them. scream and yell. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm going to rattle the rattle the fence and yell at him to stop. That's Goodly. a fail. I have failed. Me too. Oh right. five. I Desmond assume I don't roll that. since I'm kind of like just right. Yeah, you don't roll. Um, if you fail to do uh, an intelligence roll. Well, golly gee, that's a success. Uh, 34 is a hard success. Okay. Uh, if you passed, wow. Okay, you all passed. I want you to all roll uh, 1D, 1D4. And I'm still in between Magma Land and, and Waking Heather, I guess. Or do I take right. a little hit? One. All right. Four points. Jade starts yelling. She's yelling at the people. No, don't go. Don't go. Don't jump. No, don't, don't, don't. But they're not, they're, they're not listening. Right. All right. I rolled a one. 
you rolled a one, yeah, you just take one point of, of sanity damage. How about you, Dr. Leash? You're watching it. Yeah. Three points of sanity. Okay. So you're, you're also yelling at them, but they're not responding. And as you're watching them, there suddenly comes this big plume of dirt that flies up in the air. And when it wafts away, there's no hole there anymore. It's closed. And Heather begins to wiggle her head and open her eyes. Uh, Margaret's holding me down. Yeah. Yep. And you have no idea why she was on you, but you have a what? vivid dream of... Yeah, it, it, it would be like watching whales feed, except that it was, it was in an ocean of lava. Okay. Okay. Uh, but it was uh, like paradise? No, well, yeah. I mean, it was wonderful and it was warm and comfortable, but it was like seeing an ocean of lava with gigantic whale-like beasts swimming in it, uh, having a feeding frenzy. Right. I was like, oh, Mar Margaret, what? Did I, did I fall asleep? I had the most. No, you tried to go throw yourself to your death in the pit over there. What? No, I was having a, the most surreal, surreal, wonderful dream. Well, maybe that's what you were experiencing. Please don't tell me there was magma. Please don't tell me there was magma. Don't. Oh. Well. I'd be lying if I told you there wasn't magma. There, there was. I also magma. Saw we were. I was swimming in it. Well, yeah. Well, these two tried to. You both, both of you also tried to throw yourselves into the pit. Maybe that's where the missing people went. Went where? They're, they're gone. Into the pit. They're, they're gone. Is that hole? Can they make the hole so deep? How could they make the hole so deep? Didn't this earthquake happen because of one of those worm creatures? Yeah, the Chthonians or whatever the government calls them. They could, if they burrow it up. Uh, we've but seen. That, but there would be, you know, magma or lava or something. There'd be sulfur. Uh, Jade and Desmond and Heather do idea rolls. 16. Regular. Regular. 38. It starts to dawn on you that you weren't observing. You were participating. You were seeing the mind of one of those creatures. You were in their mind. You were that creature. You were, so, you were seeing from their perspective. I Did I, I get an impression it was like a hive mind kind of concept? No, not really. Okay. You, were an, you were an individual, but you do recall that, that uh, Mr. Glansandi said that they were telepathic. And what were they eating? You described some kind of feeding frenzy. Some sort of meat that comes from the surface. Delicious. Yeah, it brought itself here. <laughs> you even felt kind of horny. Yeah, I, I had the feeling I get when I see Magnus. Oh. My goodness, uh, they yeah. are. I mean, are they trying to eat? Is You're up. Uh, there's, there's still nobody else coming. No, nope. the, the feeding hour is over. People look confused, but they've, they've started to wander back to their beds, concerned for why they were out of their tents. So some people that we didn't wake up were on their way answering the summons. And then when the plume of earth came up, mm -hmm. the dream was over and they're just... Yeah. All right. Well, um, I guess... How many how many people do you think we lost tonight, Dr. Leash? Ten. But that was out of two or three or four times the the summoned. They just they just jumped in. 
They're gonna I yelled. I rattled the chain, the chain fence. Yeah, Nothing. half of the ones I knocked down didn't even care. Uh, I didn't see any kids that looked creepy in the lot, right? Not particularly. There were kids, but they were just as blank faced and mesmerized as the rest of them, as as you were. Uh, so I think we can, I think we can uh, go back to our tent and go to sleep. But the question we need to think about as we turn in our sandy cots is what we were told is the Chthonians were trying to disrupt Alex, but I wonder if they're in league at this point. Like it's the preacher is right here and the pit is right there and they're feeding on us. Maybe they're calling the people in in hopes that one of them might be Alex at some point. I, I just yeah, maybe. Maybe I mean they have alien intelligence, so I'd love to throw Alex down that hole, but I don't think that. I was thinking maybe we could have a uh, one of Doctor Lee's special bags go down that hole next time. I think we should tie one of our ankles to our cots while we sleep in case we wake up and at least. It'll be, we'll drag it behind us. Maybe it'll get somebody's attention. Uh, the ones who are awake, well, uh, Margaret especially, uh, to spot hiddens. If you were awake during this incident, yeah. 62 was a pass. All right. Um, it dawns on you, you, you've noticed that not only when it started, but when it finished, that all of the people were from really nearby tents. There weren't people coming from. Right, so it's proximity. Yeah, nobody came from very far. Your little device apparently doesn't protect us from them. Right. Which maybe means that, that you know, it has nothing to do with Alex at all, and there's just we're just stuck between Scylla and Charybdis or the blue coats and the gray coats or. But now why here? Do you think that they have any particular reason why they would be well, in this particular spot or do they just, maybe they don't have the ability to distinguish between humans and they're just trying to cull the population? Like what? Yeah, if we could assume that they're intelligent then they'd uh, come here. You've got a large mass of people for their food. If people come missing, who's going to come looking for it? Well, if I remember correctly, wasn't the earthquake caused by them trying to destroy Alex in the first place? That's, that's what we're told. What, that's what Glenn Sandy believed. If Alex is still in the vicinity, their first attempt didn't work. They're trying something different. I... I'm just making it up, but. Right. After all, their concern wasn't saving people from Alex. It was saving them from Alex and his growing power. Right. Right. Well, so now but here is, here is we, the problem. This is going to be happening every night. If we get rid of Alex, do you think they'll go? That's the hope. Yeah. I mean, what other ways other ideas we would have to get rid of these things, which I had nothing. Now, and we have no reason to think they do this all the time. I'm sure it took great energy to cause that earthquake. So when you expend energy, you need to replace it. So it's feeding. I hope it's just that and not spawning, given. Uh... Ooh, yes, I had those feelings too. Uh, well, I'm, uh, exhausted and as much as I'd love one of these special cigarettes, I think that's a bad idea. So yeah, let's get out of here. Let's, let's head back tent to the up. Tent. Yeah. And Tom, what time is it? 
I'd say it's by now it's about two thirty three in the morning. Okay. Uh let's see tomorrow if we can get a camera. I'd like to get I'd like to capture these footprints. Uh, and maybe maybe even if we get up early with Jason or somebody can, we can try to get a better head count, although I'm sure it's gonna be. And if we with the morning light, we'll be able to see better and a camera will pick up stuff better. All right. As long as Rita's not too cheesed at me for. You'll be fine. You got what she wants, money. All right. So you end up back at your tent. And I assume they knew that you sleep. Yeah, I'm going to lay down when I'm laying in bed. I'm going to think think about Alex because I'm like, oh, well, how's he going to know I'm seeking him? So I'm just going to sit there and think, Alex, Alex, Heather's looking for you. But not saying that out loud. Cause I don't so all, almost a prayer. Yep. Well, hopefully my little device is going to uh, hopefully not draw his attention to us. Um, Margaret, um, do a luck roll because you were rolling around a lot during that, uh, struggle earlier. 85. You got that much, right? <laughs> well, no. it suddenly dawns on you that with all that struggling around, what's the condition of the, uh, the object, the pendant. Well, I'm going to check. All right. Uh, you look at it and um, we'll do a spot hidden for me. Uh, 12, that's an extreme success. Oh, wow. All right. You're looking at it. It appears to be sort of a rainbow colored uh, piece of textured glass with electronics on the back of it with a battery, very obvious a battery. Um, and you can see that it's, the edge of the, where the electronics are, that it may be coming loose. Um, the battery seems to be still in place. It may have taken a little bit of damage. Um. Can I make a computer use to try to yes. assess the circuitry to see if it's actually yeah. damaged? I guess that's more of an electronic repair, but whatever. Uh, 39 is a pass on computer use. Okay. Um, so you've, you've become concerned and you've sat down and you've, you've turned, this is still the middle of the night. Um, you've turned your lamp up a little so that you can sit there and look at it. Um, you've maybe grabbed a, an instrument or something that Dr. Leach has been using to, to look at it. And there's something odd about the circuitry. Um, it's not, it's not particularly sophisticated. Um, it, you know, there's diodes and there's, uh, there's electronic components and you can see that there is something almost like a clear plastic component that's between the electronics and the uh and the circuit board um and as you're looking at it you notice that there are tiny tiny little words written on part of the back of it very very tiny um, you'd probably need a microscope or a mic, at least a magnifying glass to see it really well. It's so tiny. Does Dr. Leisius have anything like that on it? No, no, do a luck roll. Maybe he does. 46 is a fail. Okay. Yeah, you don't have anything to Well, I'm to actually look at just it. right now, I'm going to kind of just go kick Desmond out of his bed. Okay almost unceremoniously, but, um, he doesn't seem to be able to talk. 
um, was I dreaming yet? No. Did I? Okay. Look, there, there's, I think there might be a problem with our little device here. And I need some kind of magnification device to see it. And I think you and I both know somebody who might be able to help us. You mean Rita? Find one, yeah. I don't know where else to go. What time is it? It's probably 3.30. Um... I don't know if we want to. I don't know if we want to get on Rita's bad side like that. I mean, we could we could walk out there. We could see if she's open for business. If she's got maybe she's got an assistant who does the night shift. Maybe. Uh, or we can see if Liege has something. I was trying to check. Does there was stuff does uh, does how's Jason's eyesight? Um. Because if he's got, got any glasses, oh, uh, he does have glasses. So are they are they next to his bed? Uh, yeah, they are. They're right next to his bed. All right, that's good. Good thinking, Desmond. Yeah. How how bad is his vision? Is his prescription like a two, two, three? I, I don't know. It's so we'll say that there's definitely some magnification to it. Running around with Coke bottles? Not quite. Yeah. But if we Darn. can get an angle, though, if we don't have to see a lot as long as we can get like the fat edge, right? Under some light, I've got a little yeah. All right, let's get let's get into a dark corner so that the flashlight won't drive everybody crazy, and and tilt this and see what we have. <gasps> All right, um, do a uh, spot hidden roll. Whoever is looking. Uh, Forty nine is a pass. Okay. 17 is a great pass. All right. So you both look, you both see the same thing. It says Casio. Like the watch or the Shakespeare character? Like the watch. And it suddenly dawns on you that this looks like the backside, the electronics of a cheap, in a, of a cheap digital watch. Right. So they sent us in here with nothing except lies. It's a placebo. Yeah. We might as well keep it to ourselves for now. That's uh that son of a bitch. It's one more betrayal. It's good. It's good we know. Maybe we'll tell them in a day or two. It's good we know that we can't trust him at all. I wonder if he wanted us I wonder if we're I wonder is there any way this could be a transponder or something, or is it just junk? Well, keep looking at it. Um, yeah. Do uh, elect? Do you have electronics or a computer? I have computer use. Yeah, you can do computer use again. An eighty-four is not going to cut it. Yeah. yeah, no, but it definitely doesn't look sophisticated in any way. Right. And if I pull the battery out, the light goes out. Like it's just a nerd. Well, there's no light, but yeah, do a do a luck roll. Some of that left. I rolled another O five. So very I'm nice. Very lucky. So you find that the battery is a little tricky. It's a little stuck, and in the process, you pop the whole back end off of the the thing it separates from the rainbow colored piece of glass and it looks like it was just hot glued on there and there are three initials uh in the middle of the glass on the back side that say k-o-s k-o-s okay o-s maybe whose watch it was well, it's not on the watch part. It's on the glass. It's on the it's on the weird glass, the sparkly part. glass part. The more you look at it, the more it looks like a hair ring, a mm -hmm. glass or plastic Oops. ear ring. Hmm. This looks like some kind of weird arts and crafts project. Yeah, or something from our uh, punk band friends. But definitely no, it's definitely not Maybe. doing anything. All right. Do I think it's a placebo 
you yeah. think that it's a it's somebody glued the back end of a, a watch onto a an earring because it looked cool. Cool looking trinket, yeah. And so you were kind of, you were pretty fooled by it because it right. They're well, so high tech. Was, looked cool. <laughs> well, and it was you know we you're in a fragile and scared state, and so something. Now whether was nice, but whether or not Glansandi knew that, you don't know. Yeah, we don't know for sure. He so, said it was so. given but to it, him. But it, if he was fooled by it, then he's either a patsy or a, he's either a patsy. Maybe or, it's not necessarily doing anything electronic. What if this? I mean. What if it has train, a train, 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 train. Well, trying to throw a bone maybe to Glon Sandy. What if, I don't know, Alex at some time in his incarceration made some little arts and crafts projects and those that possess them are somehow, I don't know. I think that we've just been screwed over. But, yeah. Well, here, I've got a lighter. We can, we can warm up this hot glue and s stick it back on and you can carry it around. We can use it as a talisman. And if it is, you know, if that's a fragment of some glass from the from the center that Alex escaped from where he was tortured and manipulated by the government, and it works, then we've still got it. But I'm not going to count on it, and I'm not going to rip it a 60-foot radius anymore. In fact, the 60-foot radius seems more like a convenient way to do an airstrike keep, now. Oh, yeah, keep us close together. But, I mean, let, let's, I mean... Well, you got the lighter out. Do you still have any of those special cigarettes? Absolutely. Shake, shake, shake. Just need a little something. There's not. All right. Bit of a rough revelation. Let's assume that you eventually go to sleep. You wake up in the morning a little more refreshed. Um, what are your plans for this morning? Uh, Jason is getting up, and he's like... Uh, all right, so are we going to go take a look, see if there's any footprints? Yeah, yeah, why not? Go check it out. Get a close look at this. All right. So you guys get your stuff together and you walk back in that direction. Um, everyone do a listen call. Oh. Yeah. 95, I am definitely not listening. 34 out of 35. 08. Jeez. And I have a basic one, so I'm, I really, that was, you know, it's only a hard. All right. So this is not a distraction, but it's something that occurs as you are making your way back towards the pit. Um, Jade? All of a sudden, off in the distance, amidst the cacophony of people eating breakfast and, and talking and other stuff that's going on around you at this time, um, you think you hear some vaguely familiar music. Um, it sort of wafts through the camp. Um, the second that you point it out to Desmond, Desmond, you listen, and you can clearly hear a saxophone and it sounds definitely like a uh, panther, but a long way off. You can hear his, his music. Either somebody's playing his music or he is somewhere in this camp as well. And give me just a moment. I believe my dog wants out. You want out? Yeah. Mark, could you have a special relationship with panther? Yeah. Right. I like his music. What uh, were you going to say, Brian? One. Oh, I thought you started. No. Oh, that was me. I was like going Steel yeah. Panther. Those Three. sons of bitches. <laughs> Didn't prevent it. Okay. Even, even uh, Blues Band have to go somewhere after an apocalypse. That's true. 
which explains the last 400 years of New Orleans history. <laughs> uh, yeah, blues has a very special place after disasters. Um, Desmond, you've got such a good role. You can identify that he is playing my funny Valentine. Rather does brilliantly. It, does it sound like a live track? I mean, it's amplified, but th does it? And is it well, accompanied, or is it just him? It's just him, and and you can't tell because, well, he improvises, and you don't know if I mean, you haven't heard everything that he's written, so it, it's hard to tell. Right. And it's, it's a classic. All Parker, right. Do you hear that? We've got Panther is somewhere in the camp. Uh, and he's got a generator. That's good. Oh, no, he's not electric guitar. He's saxophone. Right. 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 Who knows? I'll go in. All right. All right, Jason, let's see your, your uh, geyser. All right. Well, let's go down there. He says, there's... There is a lot of fresh dust, so I don't know. Um, it's going to make me out to be a liar. Uh, so he, he climbs under the fence uh, in the, the, the little under spot and uh, starts climbing down the rope. He says, you know, come on down. Uh, it's, it's safe. You know, at the worst, you'd slide. And okay. starts looking around. And he says, I, I, I think there are some footprints, but... It looks like there was a, there must have been a geyser in the middle of the night. I don't remember seeing like this over here. And there's definitely a place where there's, might be a boot print. Mm -hmm. And uh, it all I, sort I of leads, it all sort of leads to that area that Jonathan saw where it opened up. But how long have you been in the camp, Jason? Well, since the earthquake. Right. How many times have you seen the these prints going? Oh, just a couple times. I haven't been. I I came over here out of curiosity mostly. Um, and, and you've seen the spume of Earth go up. Oh yeah, yeah. Once, it happens twice, maybe twice a day. Twice a day. Uh huh. Okay. You haven't been out here at night at all. No. Yeah, I'm not that dedicated. Yeah. No, it's it's true. It's very interesting. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I'm no geologist, but you're right. This is a looks like a really strange formation. I can't figure out where it's coming from either, because it's pretty hard packed down here. What Although, if there were, you know, just speaking again? I'm not a geologist. What if the quake opened up a a strange crevasse, like there was a really deep hole that just happened to part. Right. Did yeah. that explain it? That's definitely possible. Yeah. yeah. Do this. you have do you have your probe? You sure. said you were you said you were probing. Like, yeah, I mean just basically just a you know this thing, see how deep I can I can't push it in more than a foot or two. It's it's pretty pretty hard to surface. Hey, but it's not, it's, it's not it's not inconsistent because if you look, and he walks over to the edge of the pit, and he says, you know, you, you can't really see the layers, right? And he sort of clears the dust and the dirt. And he's like, there's definite layers here, but this is, does not match the layers out here. This has been either pushed up, well, my guess is it's been pushed up uh, from below, from a deeper, deeper layer of ground. Almost like a plug. Hmm. Has there ever been any recorded phenomenon of this occurring? Oh, there's sinkholes all over the place. Yeah, they're fairly common. The um, sinkholes that get plugged? I don't know how much there. It's not really my something I've studied a lot of. It's just something I'm interested in. Um, there are some weird things that go on with, with geology. It's been going on for four and a half million years, billion years. But this is not like a cenote or something. Like, there's. Do you know of any mechanism that would cause material to rise up in a way that would plug a hole? Not really. It'd be a fascinating study. 
most likely it won't last very long. I certainly hope not. Yeah. Hmm. Well, anyways, that's that's the sinkhole. Well, I'm I'm grateful you you pointed it out to us. Uh, so the the plug that he was yeah. quote that he was showing us is that where the hole was? Yeah, there and around it. It's you know it's not of okay. course it's not like a real plug. It's like some 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 material from deeper underground was pushed back up. Yeah, so if I if I barred his probe and then poked at it, it's firm. Yeah, it's it's pretty firm. Um it's it's soft, you know, for maybe five or six inches, but then it's you're hitting some pretty hard you don't know if it's earth or rock. But it definitely gets hard if you push it in. And you probe around, it seems to be fairly consistent until you get maybe 20 feet from the hole where the hole was. And then you can tell that the ground consistency changes. Um, if anything, it gets softer. You know, but softer like normal, normal earth and sand. There's probably a lot more sand content to it. Weird. Yeah. Where where he found the quote unquote plug is is the, if asking Jason like is there a, is there a is this a different rock fundamentally and is it always the same rock that you hit? Because I feel like things might be shifting here for some reason. He's like I don't know. Well, hell, we'd have to do a, a complete study. It would take it take some excavation. Um, we're just I'm just not prepared to do anything like that. I'm making it's observations. Not, not striking down and hitting granite one day and basalt another day and how would I know? Yeah. Unless I unless I excavated. And I'm not sure I want to, because it could be, you know, broken basements down there that are just slowly filling with sand and dirt and leaving a gap and then all of a sudden the gap opens up and then fills with more dirt. And right. there could have been homes here, it's true. Yeah. I mean, there were once, you know, packing plants and stuff. There could be basements and some, I, I don't know what the geology, what, what was done here earlier. Hmm. Who knows, maybe there's a cave down there. Or like you said, maybe a crevasse has opened up down there. Crevasse can open up this way too, where it, it's wider on the bottom. We could be in danger standing right here. Yeah, how about you move away from there? It's like going to Yellowstone. Any minute that volcano could blow, but you, you still know, go. It, yeah. Well, you know, <laughs> if it, if that happens, then we'll all be dead. So I guess nothing really to worry about. Yep. If it blew, you'd never even know it because you'd be vaporized. So what do you guys want to do? You guys have to climb back up out of the rope. Yeah. I'm not going to make you do climb rolls, but. Yeah, that's what the rope was for, after all. Yeah, uh, I really, you know, feel I really want to get out of there. Is um, Salter Bob up on the other side of the fence now, yelling his lungs out? He's. Uh, you can see that he's walking in that direction, getting ready to set up a soapbox. And uh... well, I I, I want to go and make my apologies to uh, to Rita. I, I, after breakfast, if we haven't already had breakfast. Um, uh, and since I'm going to be seeing her, does anybody have anything they'd uh, like to acquire? Mm. Not really. I could use another pack of cigarettes. Hopefully, uh, she's not so angry at me. There'll be like 40 bucks a pack now. <laughs> But uh, yeah, I think we want to have them. Yeah. Uh, and I'd also like to see if anybody is feeling uh, if anybody wants to play big fish, little fish, and if it works if you're in pairs or if the little shits only come up to you if you're one alone. 
or find a place to watch for them. Because if it's really a game and a, kid, a bunch of kids are playing it, that's a different thing than if it's, uh, I don't know, whatever the hell it would be. Well, Jade, Heather, do you do want to go observe, go sit around? See what happens, Jade, are you, would you be comfortable doing that? Yeah, I'll be okay with that. I just wonder if um, they'll come up to us again, or maybe they'll hit somebody who has them. Well, we're not, it's not a matter of wanting them to come up to you specifically again, just if you spot them. Oh, okay. Hey, brothers, sisters, have you found the way to the truth yet? Have you found the way to understanding the terrors that are taking place around us, the signs and the portents? A bit. You got a map? He says, a map? A map to the future? A map to where we should all be? I have a map. But you want to see Alex, don't you? I do, and I, yes. I, I, I sought him last night, but apparently I was looking in the wrong place there. You sought him last night? What do you mean you sought him last night? He was probably I, asleep I, somewhere. I called. I opened up my mind, and, you know, I... I I, I didn't know how else to seek him, Salter Bob. Listen, listen, ma'am. He he's not a, a a spirit or a ghost. He's not a, a, a an angel or a or anything like that. He's just a ten year old boy. He Don't says, "Listen." He says, "Uh, I just got started here," and he looks around. Michael, you see a guy quite a ways off. Turn around and look at him. He does. And as he walks up, he's got a big smile on his face, and he's dressed in rags. And he says, Michael, these pair of people want to see Alex. He says, good. He says, Alex will want to see them, I'm sure. And he says, well, he says, do you know where he is? Could you take him to Alex? He says, I could find out. He says, well, brothers and sisters, if you want Alex, he'll take you there. My, Michael will. Okay. Well, how about Michael both finds where he is, and then we can go meet Alex yeah. later. I'll Michael. I think some, some things to do today. I'll go with Michael. I, I'm curious. I think it'd be best if we all met Michael. Oh, he's right there. Well, Michael. We all met Alex. Michael Henry. Is that your uh and, and friends, Michael right? Michael's friends. a ragamuffin, you said? Well yeah, he's he's look, is he young as well as as you know, ragged? Well it's hard to tell, maybe in his thirties. Um uh dirty. Um, Are his eyes um, sparkly? No, he's smiling. It's just a regular looking happy like a regular fellow. fellow guy, yeah. All right. Um, how, how far, uh, Michael, how far is, uh, would we go to see Alex? Should we bring some water? Not far, not far at all. Would, do you think Alex would like a gift? No, nah, he doesn't care about material things. You shouldn't either. That's right. He says, now you're kind of dressed a little bit uh, fancy, but uh, we understand you're not one of us. We're, we're, we're not, uh, we have not yet forked. Ah, he reaches in his pocket and he pulls out a, a table fork. Does Alex distribute those or do you just collect them? We just find them wherever. Uh, I'd like on, to make it an aside to Dr. Liege and say, you know, if we can we can try to be slow and you can pick up a backpack of specials. Uh, Michael, I've got to go run and collect medications and such. Um, um, All right. Could I meet you somewhere? Well, you don't know where to go. Yeah, yeah, but uh, just, just hold on. I'll, I'll, I'll be right back, and I'll run off to the car. Okay, I'm just going to take you 15 minutes. Um, oh. But 
Uh, Jonathan. Oh. Oh, he t- he's, he's running to the car. <laughs> he ran off to the car. I was going to yeah. say something to him, though. Yeah. So, so Michael, uh, are, are, would you... Let's, let's you... move over here, because Preacher Bob's going to right, start yeah, talking. Yeah. He's loud in my ear. I don't don't need that i go bad now um would you say say your uh alex's group is well organized would, would you consider yourself near the top of it not really organized no hmm. we're just his friends right 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 is michael your original name yeah michael henry oh i was wondering because you know i sure you're aware that michael's also the leader of the army of heaven, right? Oh, jeez. Look, we're not really interested in religion. Uh, we deal with what we know, what we can see, what we can feel. Yeah, that's that. That makes me feel better. That was, uh, you know, because I've had enough of spiritualism, and I was. You're wondering. you're thinking that we're some sort of a cult. Well, you you've got me there, Michael. You got me there, and I, I just really was trying to, you know. See, see if uh, he's getting involved in someone with the truth or someone that maybe is just taking advantage uh, of the I, su- I suppose we're kind of a, a cult personality, but not in the negative sense. Right. I understand. I'm going to pull, as Michael is kind of moving us aside, I'm going to stop Desmond. Okay. Just you want to talk to him privately? Just, sure. Yeah. Look, we. I mean, I know we said we're going to wait, but we have to tell them. If they think yeah, I think you're right. I think you're right. They, they, they think that we're fine, but we're not. If they're counting on that tech at all, it it's, not, it's their... not Dumbo's feather. They have to know that we don't have anything. But yeah, we have to be. Probably. Probably. So, yeah. Whoever, whenever you're close to somebody, I was hoping actually to pull Jonathan aside and get that to him, but. Yeah, we can. I mean, we're walking through crowds of people. So uh, yeah, but I agree. We have to. We have to make it clear. Um, Jonathan, I was going to say this before you ran off. Um, do a spot hidden for me. Oh boy, that is. I believe that's a fail. Yeah, it's a okay. fail. Eyes on the prize. Okay. How much of a fail? Um, let's say with a, on like a scale of one to a hundred, 58 out of 35. Hmm. All right. Um, so you go there. Um, do another spot hidden on your way back. That's a good oh one. Oh one? Oh one. All right. So I'm gonna I'm gonna extend that. Um as you're coming back and you can see your group talking to Michael, preacher Bob over there. I'm going noticeably slower coming back. <laughs> right. Yeah, because it's heavy. Um and I have very delicate medications in the back, in the backpack. There is a man. Um, he looks a little too well dressed for the tent city. Like maybe he came from the outside. And he's between two tents. Um, you caught him out of the corner of your eye as you went. And he was trying, in your opinion, he was trying to look inconspicuous as you left. When you're coming back in the other direction, the same route that you took, he's still there, only now he's positioned himself so that he's definitely watching your group but you're behind him as you're coming back. You, okay. he's, he's watching you guys. Um, he doesn't see you. And so he's, how well-dressed is he? 
he's not well dressed. He's it looks like he's roughed himself up to look like a tent city person, except that it's obvious that he's not dirty he's enough showered, to have showered lived this here. week. Yeah, he showered this morning, most likely. Mm. And his hair is clipped. It at a, at a glance you wouldn't notice necessarily, but you definitely pick up with that role. You definitely pick up that there is some strange guy watching your group from okay. a distance, and he doesn't know that you've noticed, and he won't notice that you've noticed if you just. And I past. I don't recognize him at all. He's clean cut enough to be military. Okay. And not not crazy Bob military, but mm -hmm. I'm gonna I'll walk past him, side eye him a little bit. Okay. Get a good memorize his face. Um and then walk up to everyone else. Um, All right, if, uh, if if you do that, mm -hmm. and since he's watching the group and he sees you, he immediately turns away as if he's not doing anything. Okay, but I, which makes him more I, conspicuous. Did I get a good look at his face? A little bit, yeah, kind of a right. generic. Like I'd, I'd be able to, I'd be able to tell if he's following us or something. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Then. Uh, all right, uh, I've got our I've got our medication, uh, Michael. Well, hey, 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 can can John? I'm gonna kind of wave him over. Mm. Okay. What's I'm Marcus? gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, you know put my arm around Michael's shoulder and 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 chat him up for a minute so that you have a okay. chance, Margaret. Okay, I want to take Jonathan. We can't do this. We're so unprepared. Look, you see, I'm gonna pull out the thing. You see this? Mm-hmm. Is when I discovered it. It's a damn placebo. There's nothing in here. This is just the back of a watch. It's hot glued to the glass plate. They gave us a placebo. Okay, look, we, we are not prepared to face down with this kid yet. Mm. All right? And the thing is, Rita, Rita knew the book Brotherhood of Forks. Right. We have a contact that's a third party that I'm sure we might be able to leverage to find Alex without walking right into the jaws of hell, basically. We have other methods. We, I mean. Hmm. What if a placebo is all that's necessary? Well, then it's already ruined now, I guess. No. Oh. They may might if that was the case, they might have tried a little harder. Maybe not something electronic. Maybe Glanzani doesn't even know it's a fake. Or he does. And maybe we're all just in the middle of some experiment. What's right? Kid. Well But look, and in, in, in either way, I We we do need a delivery system. Hey, are are you gonna follow my lead a little bit here? I think I can sure. get us out of the situation without looking. So I'm gonna just Reach in and touch my evil so I force myself to throw up. Oh, you are? All right, do yep. a con roll. Do a con roll with a bonus dice. So, Michael, how long have you had a fork? <laughs> I think you mean uh, how long have I been in the Brotherhood? That's what I mean. How long have you carried a fork? Well, the Brotherhood's only been around so for... So, I had to ask, is it, would it be... So, the bonus dice is helping me... Do it as throw I, up, yeah. If you want to, throw yeah. So up. I got a twelve, which all is right. You you yeah. you start gagging, and uh, and throw up. That's a pretty good roll. Oh, geez, your friend is sick. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. She's your other friend yep. said he had medicine. Do you need medicine? <laughs> it's a totally yeah, different um, thing to, though, because she had some bad water. Yeah, I when, need to. Oof. I I do medicine. have a uh, and where no no I just need to. I have some ibuprofen here. Let's uh, let's head back to the tent, and uh, we'll take care of you. Uh, yeah. Sorry, Michael. Unless, unless oh, no, Alex okay. does healings. Alex doesn't do healings, right? That's <laughs> no, what Bob no, no. said. 
look, if you want to meet Alex, just find me or find any one of us. Yeah. We, do you have a place where you, you can, do you have a you place could where you probably, frequent? Well, you, you know, you could probably um, be a little harder to just go there. But, uh, you, you know, look look around the uh, the James Rolfe Square station. Um, the old, uh, you know, the subways are wrecked at this point. But uh, look around the station. You'll find a lot of us up there. Right. Right. Michael, what what makes uh, Alex so special? Can you help me to understand a little? It's right, easier if you meet him. It's easier if you meet him. But when you meet him, you'll you'll just realize that everything that he says makes total sense. Right. Hmm. But can you give me a little nibble here, Jade? Well, it's everything. Jade, Jade go, go go! Please go grab my purse. Come back, come back anytime you want. I don't know what's the deal with the, these people. I mean, we find Margaret, you, you're sick. Jonathan, you get medicine. I mean, I thought we were going with Michael. You know, Heather. I'm gonna the second we're out of sight and earshot, <laughs> I'm gonna pull Jade and Heather very close. It's like, listen, I'm gonna show them the the little medallion. You see? Yeah, this? I know. I know. And I'm just going to pop the hot glue apart. You broke it. No. What? Oh, damn it. <laughs> it's a watch. This is the back of a damn watch. It's hmm. a Casio. Getting screwed left and right here. And not the good it's, way. It's a placebo. Look. So oh. we're about to walk right into... Look, Desmond and I discovered it last night. We were going to tell you guys when we felt the time was right, and it seemed like a pretty pressing situation here. Uh, uh, Margaret's being nice. Placebo, like, might be helpful. This is a dummy. This is something that we were sent in. We were trying to, they were trying to fake this. I was just trying to get some intel before we split off from them, though. No, we, we can't. I mean, the more interaction that we have, the more their followers get a good look at us, the easier it would be for them to find out exactly where we are. Easier for so, them to... While you guys were cavorting with Michael, on the way back, I noticed a uh, rather clean-cut looking gentleman eyeballing you guys pretty heavily. Worse than um, I thought. Your bait he, he looked... He looked... Well... Let's be honest, he looked like he showered this morning hmm. as opposed to watching 10 people jump into a pit. Look, uh, some, some I, I mean, this might just be my paranoia talking, but I think it's pretty well founded. I think that somebody wants us to take them to Alex. Yeah. And she might, the guy, if they um, were going to tail us to do that. I mean, how are they going to get us to yeah. walk into one of the most dangerous places on this planet? Make up a little lie, give us a bit of confidence, and send us on our way, and we are going to walk right into it. Is there a homing beacon in that damn talisman? I wonder I wonder if uh, Shower Man, I'm, I'm calling him that now, I wonder if Shower Man has a, an actual method, or at least some information. I did get a reasonably good look at his face. If I see him again, we should, uh, I don't know. Do you think we could lock someone in our car? One of our vehicles? One of them's a chem lab, but the look, other one I, could I don't turn think into a jail. Could spirit somebody away against their will that far in the middle of, of all these people without getting somebody. Well, between the, the tent city and the car lot, there are guards. Mm, true. So if you grabbed a fad or whatever the hell he is. I think that they would exchange prisoners at the fence. But we could. But on the inside, unless right. it's got a good wire. Jesus, we're talking like crazy people. Right. But look. Oh, it's, if we still we are mean, crazy people. We are we yeah. Look, we Rita Rita mentioned that she she was the one who knew who the Brotherhood of Forks was. Perhaps she could help us find Alex without 
throwing ourselves to the mercy of them. Well, I think she just knows what they are, not who they are. Yeah. Well, she can. And find we have out. a we have a reasonable location to to check now. Right. They and, and it metro. makes sense that they're at the entrance to an underground cavern. Right. That fits with both history and what Glenn Sandy said. Mm-hmm. And if we they're find a map, gra- they're they're ground dwellers. Right. If we find this, if we find a map of of San Damiel, if we still have one, we might be able to see how close that station was to where our cars got jumped. I think the I think the Brotherhood jumped cars all over the place. Are you back at your tent right now? Yeah. I think we're. I think we're. Yeah. Oh, right. In a huddle on our way back to the tent. Right. I'm yeah. sure they jumped many cars yeah. time. in the disaster. I'm wondering how close they are away from home base. As I recall, you had grabbed a map from the flea bag motel. Yeah. yeah. Um, why don't you do a, a spot hidden roll? You don't need a spot hidden roll. You have your, your map. Uh, you look it up and uh, you find James Rolfe Square uh, where the station would have been um it was only maybe a thousand feet from where you were uh with michael Mm -hmm. it's it's just past the edge of the tent city on the other side of a fence um not yet i mean they're they're like i say they're not finished putting it in in construction and uh Last night, we found that people were only being summoned to the pit from a some kind of rough radius. Yeah, like within it's, 150 feet or so of the... Our home tent is not in that radius. No. We had, If we'd stayed politely at home, we would not have heard the call. Now, I wonder how... Here is a weird kind of a crazy... Speaking crazy person talk. You know, you saw into the mind of whatever these Catholians are, and they tried to lead you somewhere. I wonder if that communication, if you're prepared for it, goes both ways. Perhaps Uh. trying to guide them. I don't know. I'm talking like a crazy person. I need to sit down. Hmm. If you do, you even do you get what I'm saying. Trying no, to just, like, guide yeah. them over to the station. If we could, I feel like if we could lash enough of our brains together, that might make sense. But I think that you know those dangerous, the it's stupid ours. giant worms have brains a thousand times the size of ours. But I don't know. I was just, I was having an experience that wasn't me. I didn't feel another mind. I was just having another experience. Hmm. But perhaps if we, if we dreamt in a group, if, if, if they want to attack him, but I don't know about that either. And what the hell, I mean, what, what is our job here? You know, is it simply to, to, to show shower man where Alex is well, so they can somebody, do air strikes? Whoever wants that kid, I don't think is anybody's I'm assuming. friend. Whether it's the research yeah. lab trying to get him back, whether it's the military trying to get him for whatever research they can think mm-hmm. of, it's. I'm assuming uh, Shower Man is some sort of collection, go. part of some sort go. of collection, collection, but I might be wrong. That's my assumption, though. Right, but now, now does they have access to more recess, more resources than we do, so, or at least showers. Desmond, you you've read the the text that we've had more than anybody else. Is there any kind of spell to contact that we might be able to use to reach out to another intelligence? 
you're muted. Desmond, you're muted. All that I've learned that I think is uh, I can count on has to do with containment and not with approach. Assuming that's correct, Dan. Well, yeah. I mean, deferment's mysteries is very difficult. Yeah. Um, it's going to take you months to figure that out. But uh, there's two of us now. It's very disturbing. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's harmful. You know, binding and and binding enemies and casting circles is all that I understand at this point as something that you can choose to do outside of the uh and you're not 100 percent sure that's not just all nonsense yeah i haven't used it um the only thing we know that works is is the thing that has harmed us yeah all right so it's still technically the middle of the day because you went to the morning it's it's not that far 10 minutes 15 minutes and after a quick spam lunch with some burnt rice and weird bread and Gatorade or Tang or whatever the hell you get. Tang. Mm. <laughs> Good stuff. Before they added the, uh, back when it still had sugar instead of uh, aspartame. I wouldn't mind just wandering by that station, maybe not going in, just kind of seeing, hey, you know, what activities going on around it. All right. Well, have you? I I strongly recommend that you don't go there alone. No. Uh, because if you've got a, if there's a hole in the ground that's surrounded by cultists, and a, a lady passes by, she might well be shuffled in. Silently. If his, if his influence is anything like what we experienced last night, do you think we could have any sort of warning? Um, I would. I was asleep. I was asleep the whole time until Margaret woke me up. Thank you, by the way. Um, did did anyone have uh, Heather? You were awake. Was there any sort of warning? No. I mean, you know, it was just when when I finally woke and Margaret was on top of me. I just assumed I fell asleep you know the conversation had lulled out and i just i mean i, I mean you, a micro nap i mean it it was bad it was sudden i mean we were talking about heather's favorite subject uh glon and she just all of a sudden gone hmm. oh, that's a problem and I, yeah when i woke up i was I, a good when i was woken thank you doctor i was what 25 feet from where I'd been watching. And I had been, I mean, I'd gone to sleep, but I hadn't walked 25 feet and you didn't drag me there. No. And no, it I, seems like we're between two magnets. I, I think, well, the only, the only reason all of us are still here is because we had numbers. Numbers might be the only way to prevent any sort of Alex shenanigans. Right, but we need numbers, but we need more. We need teeth, if that makes sense. I mean, if if only one of us is able to make it through. Um, everyone do a spot hidden. You're all talking. I assume that you can see out of these tents. No 62 is a pass. Oh, Fail. Oh, nice. okay, Jade. We'll give it to Jade then. Hmm. So, Jade, you're sitting there and you're watching, and you can see out of the tent. Um, and you can see, of course, all the other tents. You can see the, the lanes going, you know, off in that direction. And you can see you're actually looking towards the lane that, that leads you towards where you guys were earlier. And you suddenly notice Salter Bob. And he's coming along and he's poking his head in tents. And it looks like he's saying something to people. And uh, he's 
working his way in your guys' direction. Um, uh, finally, you see him walk up to somebody outside their tent, and he says something to them, and they, they point, like, right at your tent. Hey, we got incoming, that preacher. He, he's looking for us. All right. Salter Bob walks up to your tent and he sort of peeks inside. He goes, hey, brothers and sisters, I found you. And he says, hi, Bob. Would, Bob. You, mind, would you mind if I come in? I would. You would mind if I come in or... Now no. I come in. No, you come right on in. You come right on in, Soldier Bob. So he steps inside and he says, hey, Michael told me that you, somebody was sick. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Margaret over there, unfortunately, yeah. got ill. You oh, know, it's pretty, it's, it's pretty dirty in here. It's, there's, some, there's some nasty stuff going around. Oh, yeah. You said you drank some bad water, must, you must said? Have, yeah, must have been. Must have been. Think, Not feeling right. so good. Well, I have some medication. If you, uh, this is like I think mostly for seasickness, but it might help in your, if you're feeling nausea, nauseated. I think Margaret's stable right now. I mean, you know, we, a bunch of us have uh, some uh, medical background, a little bit like biology what, background. Uh, what? Uh, what's the active ingredient on it? Well, I think it's Dramamine. I don't know if that'll help, but it's the what I got. We appreciate it. Thank you. So he hands it to you. Um, so you didn't get to meet Alex, but you know you still can. Yeah, yeah. Uh, maybe, we're maybe. Yeah, we're planning on better. it. Well, I'm free right now. If you want to come, I'll take you to him. What do you think, if, guys? If you're feeling okay. I mean, we're all feeling good, right? We got uh, uh, times on our side. We got the, some numbers. Listen, folks, I don't know why you're all so reluctant. Tell you the truth, uh, Salter Bob. That's what we want, the truth. This whole, you know, the, this, this, the, this last week's been such a trial. Oh, uh, yes, it has. Oh, some my of goodness. us feel, you know frail some of us feel very uncertain and it happens that the group of us came to town together just before things you know the event and after losing a close friend so oh i'm sorry in the in the earthquake no before before we get to town we lost a close friend oh my i'm so sorry so, if you'll, if you must understand that we we might be more in need of Alex than anybody else, but we might not be ready quite yet. Well, there's we might, nothing to be afraid of. I was well, just a little boy. But the truth is something that can be frightening, even though it's the most important thing, right? Can't the truth be frightening, Soldier Bob? It's frightening until you find out what it is. And then it's not frightening at all. It's comforting. And why are you so sure that this Alex has the truth? Because I've heard him talk. Right. I've heard a lot it, of people talk about a lot of things. You've heard a lot of people with agendas. Alex doesn't have any agenda. He's trying to save us. But, you know, some of us aren't ready to be saved from materiality yet. I'm, well, I'm all in good time. Death, you know, that's when I'll be free of materiality. Well, I don't know what to say to reassure you. There's really nothing to be afraid of at all. Nothing at all. But you do seem to be preoccupied. You seem to think that, I don't know. This Michael said some sort of cult. Well, I, it, that that was definitely my concern. And well, have you people been led astray before? That's possible. I we we have. We I I have. I uh, have. That's why I, my paranoia uh, might have. Uh, well, listen to me. Spread on. 
all I would ask you to do is talk to him. If you don't like what he has to say, you can walk away. He's never kept anyone that didn't want to be there. Has anyone ever chosen to walk away? Oh, sure. Lots of people. Lots of people aren't interested in the truth at all. They want to live in their delusion. They want to indulge in their material possessions. People love the material things. People love their cars and their fancy homes and their diamond earrings and all that nonsense. Um, the uh, material, material possessions do have a, a pull especially with those who are uh, physically infirm. You, uh, you, you were, I mentioned medication. Listen, we're not Luddites. We understand technology. Technology is fine. Intelligence, all of the medical breakthroughs that have happened, those are wonderful. Those are great things. Those should be happening. It's mm -hmm. the other part that needs to be changed. Alex can explain it so much better than I can. Salter, Salter Bob, you say when you when you first met Alex, yes, sir. he he struck you. You you found the truth when he started talking to you. Yes, not before. And I was I was amazed. I was like. How is it that this little child is speaking to me? When he, when he started talking to you, when you heard his voice? The things that he said, it wasn't so much his voice. It was just the things that he said made sense. And uh, I kept thinking about the Bible where it says that a little child shall lead you. And I wondered then, I'm not so sure I wonder now, if that's what the Bible was talking about. Now I tend not to rely so much on this. This is what I know because this is the way I grew up. But there is a truth. And I'm beginning to understand it a little better. And it doesn't have anything to do with this. Hmm. Hmm. But I ain't going to force you. I certainly don't want to scare you. I understand. Well, I mean, I have to... I have to find a belief that anything matters at all anymore. I'm not sure that anything to... does matter at all. I'll tell you what matters. Love. No, we see, but that's the thing, Salter Bob. None of this is important. For love all is. specks of dust, adrift in an uncaring sea of the universe, it doesn't matter what truth we find or what love we have or what things we have or don't have in the end we're all gonna die well let me ask you this ma'am let me ask you this ma'am it doesn't matter to who it might not matter to some alien that lives on some other planet but it certainly matters to you and me and these people here love friendship family that matters to us. We aren't little specks of dust to each other. But you've described what Alex speaks about as either truth or as love, but never as both those things together. And you've also suggested that you cannot repeat his teaching well, so it makes me feel like his teaching must be sort of a mesmeric sound, and it's either truth or love. All or I'm both, all I'm doing, my friend. Say. All I'm doing, my friend, is telling you what he says. It's just he says it so much better. You know. So I I, I hear here I hear what you're saying, Margaret and Desmond, but. He's convinced me. I, I want to go. I want. I want. I want to meet him. Good. How about the rest of you? There ain't nothing to fear. Listen, you're grown adults. You just walk away if you want to. No, and see, and I'm a grown adult that can make my own decisions. 
Salter Bob. I'm yes, not you can. looking for meaning in my life. That's already gone, and I don't see a way that I'm getting it back. I mean, I'm not feeling so good today. Okay. You, have because, you know what? Portland. I might feel different a different day, but I'm going to make that decision. Well, I don't why need don't you. Let your friends come. Let them make that decision. Then they can come back and tell you. Wants to go. I'm not going to stop her. Uh, Salter Bob. Mm-hmm. You've been a very warm and engaging presence. Uh, Thank again, you. How, how long have you been a follower mm. of the boy? Maybe a little over eight months. Eight months. But I've been a preacher here in San Daniel for the past five years since my daughter died. So I may have fun. screwed up the dates on that, but it's not important. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Asterisk. sorry for your loss. Uh, Everyone dies at some point, but you know it's a tragedy when a child dies before a parent. It was very hard. I, I won't ask you about that at at this moment because that is intrusive. But I would point out that your conversion is very recent, and I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you a secret, Salter Bob. Yes, sir. None of these people know it, although several other people who were scattered in the camp know that uh, there's been a communist mind control agent released. And, it's, and, and what we're told as agents of the government is that Alex is a plant who's it's not even his fault but he has been trained and and created by the communists to to use sound waves and lsd and other things to try to generate an anti-american cult so while I believe that everything you say is very much in earnest, I fear very much for your physical well-being and those that, that of others. Particularly, I'm concerned that he's sought out uh, people who were homeless or indigent or otherwise in crisis. They, they give them, they, they secretly induce psychoactive states it's it's a it's a cia program i had nothing to do with i'm concerned that you bob are a victim and i, I again none of these people know anything about this but we do have other agents i i was sent here to look for into the question of whether this Alex is even a child. I don't think this Alex is even a child. So let me interrupt you there for just a moment. And he turns to the rest of you and he's like, is he off drugs? Uh, I mean, it's okay. I mean, there's a lot of people <laughs> on drugs. It's just that uh, that is the most imaginative and amazing thing that I've ever heard in my entire life, that Alex is some sort of a government agent. So let me ask you a few things. I realize we're going over, if that's okay, just a little, we get to a break point. Um, let me ask you something. He says, at what point, you say you're not even sure that he's a child. And it's like, uh, Alex is 10 years old. Alex grew up here in San Damio. Alex went to school here in San Damio since he was five, kindergarten. Alex was I, born here. Why, how, how is this? Where are you getting your information? You have been severely deceived. Uh, uh, my friend, uh... I don't believe you could possibly produce actual documentation of Alex's background. Well, it's a little difficult now, but I bet you could. 
Yeah, I bet you could ask not. him what school he went to. I'm sure he knows. Is asking Where's his teachers. His parents. Now. His parents are dead. Hmm. He's he's uh, got a mysterious following of some size. He told he's a us. Person. He told us that his parents died last year, and that he was given over to foster care, and that the man and the family he was given over to that the man was going to molest him. And he knew that and he left and he has been living on the streets and his followers now are taking care of him. But that's all. He's not from some government, government uh, issued uh, uh, conspiracy place or anything like that. He's just a little boy. And I think that's where we should, we can continue talking to Salter Ball. A complicated okay. debate. Our players included Morgan Llewellyn, Brian Daly, Keith Craig, Jason Melanchock, and David Gassaway, with yours truly as the Keeper of the Secrets. We're currently producing up to four shows a week with music and sound effects added in post-production in order to create a richer listener experience. We provide audio-only versions of our shows free for you to download from Podbean or iTunes. The costs involved with our show are provided almost entirely by our patrons. Without them, we wouldn't be able to do what we do. If you'd like to help support our show, please visit our Patreon account. Just a dollar or two a month helps us a lot. You can find a link in the description below. Like, share, and subscribe to our channel and punch that bell icon for updates on our latest shows. And leave us some comments. We enjoy reading them and answering any questions you might have. We also have an Into the Darkness Facebook group where you can chat with us and uh, the other members of our club. Once again, there's a link below. This is Tom Rayleigh, together with all the members of our gaming club, inviting you to journey with us once again into the darkness for another adventure into the universe of HP Lovecraft and the Call of Cthulhu role-playing game. Until next time, good luck and good gaming.